Hello and welcome to another Tom's Toolbox video. My name is Tom Clark, I am your host, and today we have got lots of goodies from the Diamond Chain Company, and we're gonna show you how to install three different types of roller chain cotter pins. Not to be confused with the Mr. Cotter pins that Horshack and Epstein put on his chair. Now, as you can see, I've got PPE for today's demo. That's gonna be gloves and safety glasses. And you wanna make sure that you always wear the proper PPE for your job too. So I am going to get my uh, gloves on here. I've already got my glasses on and I'll explain to you why I've got all of this stuff on. Number one, when we've got our uh, chain here, a lot of lubricants and stuff, I don't wanna get it on my hands and I'll tell you why I've got these on. Well, you should always wear safety glasses, but there's another reason why. First, never use the wrong size in a connecting link. Cotter pins are made to size. Now, if the pin's too large, it's not gonna fit. If it's too small, it could fall out prematurely and fail, which means downtime, scrap, and the possibility of injuring someone. Like, for example, see this really cool chain right here? Almost looks like a tennis bracelet, doesn't it? Well, the cotter pins are probably really tiny. That would be the wrong size. I, I don't think you would wanna use that. And uh, here's a really large chain right here. So, uh, and the, oh, look at that. It just falls right through. Too small, too large, no good. There's a right size cotter pin for every link. Now to ensure you always have the right size cotter pin, keep the pieces in their original package like this one that we have right here. Now here's a part that's labeled so I know exactly what I'm working with. Smart. This is the way to go. Second, when you're installing heat treated cotter pins like the wonderful ones from Diamond Chain, don't bang them with a hammer, don't bang them with a wrench, don't use a screwdriver because small pieces can chip off when struck and what? Could fly in your eye, but I got my PPE on, so just in case somebody else does it, I'm not gonna do it. it. Could fly in your eye, damage, weaken the pin, not good. You don't wanna hurt anybody, so uh, don't use that, all right? And then third, don't use standard commercial grade cotters, especially in high performance or severe applications. Why they don't provide satisfactory performance, okay? Now, the different types of cotter pins that are available and how to install them, here we go. Three types, the most common is the straight or what we call the split cotter pin right there. You can see it's kind of split. Now there's also the shepherd's crook. As you can see, it kind of looks like a shepherd's crook. And then we have the Z-style cotter, and you're saying to yourself, Tom, that doesn't look like a Z-style cotter, but trust me, by the time this video is over, I will prove to you that this is a Z-style cotter. Now we're gonna start with the staggered leg split cotter, where the ends have staggered lengths. You can see this one over here is a little bit longer than this one over here, which is a little bit shorter. Now this style of cotter pin is typically used with chain sizes 80 and larger. Now when you install this type, of split cotter. You want to make sure the leading ends are facing the direction of travel, okay? So we're going to say that my chain is going this way, all right? So if it's going this way, I want to make sure that the cotter goes in this way, like this, okay? Everything is going this way. See, that way, when you get your application up to speed, boom, you won't have the sharp ends of the pin traveling at fast speeds towards anyone. You don't want that. Now, once your connecting link is ready to go, you want to insert the cotter until it's flush. And then we're going to secure the cover plate by spreading the two staggered legs in opposite directions. Now, pliers are going to help you do that. You don't want to bend the individual legs any more than 45 degrees. Some folks like to wrap the prongs around the pin, but when you bend a cotter pin that far, it's going to significantly weaken it. And what we've done is we've shown you how we do that. We've got our cotter pins in all the way. And then as you can see, 45 degree angles on the ends right there. It's not all the way around. This is the proper way to do it, okay? Next up, we're gonna work with the Shepherd's Crook style cotter pins. And that's what we have right there. Now this is available upon request for chain sizes 120 through 160. And instead of using two split pins, we only need one Shepherd's Crook to secure the cover plate. Now like the split pin, the end of the cotter should be oriented towards the direction of chain travel. So once again, all my chains are going to be going this way, okay? So we're going to start by pressing the pin through both of the pre-drilled holes. We have that right there. All right. So I've got that going through the holes. Now the crook of the pin snaps over the top of the leading pin to hold the cover plate in place. Now in order to fully secure the cotter, what we're going to do, we're going to make sure that that slides in all the way, and then we're going to crimp the middle here between the two chain pins. Okay, so I got the cotter pin all the way in there, and now I am going to crimp it. So we're still going this way, and as you can see, it goes down a little bit, so my crimp is good to go. You, you have to make sure that you, you 
don't want to strike the cotter directly with anything that's going to damage the piece, all right? You can push it all the way in. Then I took the pliers and I actually bent it. Now, the crimp is necessary to minimize fretting or vibrational wear. Now, lastly, we have the Z-style cotter pin. It's not a Z yet, but it's still going to be a Z, trust me. This style is available upon request for chain sizes 120 through 200. Now, again, we're going to insert the cotter through the pre-drilled chain pin holes until the pre-bent side makes contact with the chain pin. So I'm going through here, all right, all the way through, all right. You can see where we are right here, okay? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to bend the opposite end in the opposite direction with our pliers. So I've got my pliers here. So we've got boom, boom, boom. But you know what you don't want to do is you don't want to bend the cotter too far into an S shape. You don't want to wrap it all the way around both sides like that. Not good, because that's going to damage the cotter pin. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Three styles of roller chain cotter pins from the fine folks at Diamond Chain and how to install them properly. Now, if you have any questions whatsoever, make sure you contact your nearest Motion Industries branch location. They'll help you out. And you know what else you should do? Make sure you look for more of Tom's Toolbox videos. And you do that by going to mihowto.com and just search. What do you want to look for? Who knows? You might find something like this from Diamond Chain or somebody else. But the whole key is you got to make sure you go to mihowto.com, OK? Hey, thanks for watching. I'm Tom Clark. I've been your host. And now I can take off my PPE.